GameCube was a system that really got me into video games. Before that, I basically only played Pokemon, Kirby, and Sly Cooper. The neighbors I had when I was little had a GameCube, and I was completely mesmerized by it. I can still remember walking into the room and seeing Mewtwo fighting Donkey Kong and Jungle Japes. Just from watching them, I also fell in love with Super Mario Sunshine and Zelda The Wind Waker. I say watching, because my neighbors were assholes and wouldn't let me play on their GameCube. They would only let me watch, because hell if I know. When I was 27, they told me they would buy me a GameCube for my birthday. Me, being 7, believed them, and they, being assholes, didn't buy me one. They got me some weird clay thing that I never used instead. I was devastated more than any kid should be. Luckily, my parents bought me one, along with Wind Waker, two controllers that I still use, and... The Incredibles for GameCube. I didn't keep that one. I didn't have a memory code either, so I just played the opening to Wind Waker for a few days. A few days later, I got a memory code in the game that I wanted more than anything else. Super Smash Bros. Melee. That summer, I spent virtually all my time playing my GameCube and a few games like Sunshine and Pokemon Coliseum. I got mine in the M as life, so I missed out on a lot of games for it. I still haven't played Pikmin 1, 2, Luigi's Mansion, or Animal Crossing. And you know, thinking about it, I played a lot of Shovelware when I was younger. How I got my GameCube has always been the most memorable to me over any other system. I just didn't remember any of the others quite well as my GameCube. The week came close, but I still remember being way more excited when I got my GameCube. It was probably a childhood thing. Well, what does this have to do with Smash Melee? It was my most wanted game for the system, and my memories from that GameCube were almost synonymous with Melee. I haven't really played Melee too consistently since I got Brawl, but I love every game in the series just about equally. Well, except Smash 64, but that's not for today. Alright, time for a trip down memory lane. Booting this game up and watching that intro still sends chills down my spine. Even now, I'm still impressed by Mayla's opening cinematic. It looks a bit dated nowadays, but it blew my goddamn mind as a kid. You get to see all the characters beating themselves and everything's timed with the music, and oh my god, it's so good! Since we're already talking about graphics, they haven't aged too great. The GameCube has some way better looking games like Metroid Prime and Wind Waker. The graphics aren't disgusting or anything, but the system isn't being pushed to its limits here. The important part is that it runs at 60 FPS. The music stays really well though, especially that main theme. Smash's soundtrack kind of feels like it's cheating quality-wise. They always remix the best music from all of Nintendo's different franchises. It's still an awesome selection here, but most of it isn't entirely original. So, what is Smash Brothers, you ask? Well, it's probably the best glorified advertisement ever created. It's a crossover fighting game of Nintendo characters. Even in Melee, we've got famous characters like Mario, Pikachu, Link, Kirby, and Samus. And lesser known characters like Ness and Mr. Game & Watch. They're more famous now, but they sure as hell weren't before they were included in Smash Brothers. When I say Smash Brothers is a well-made glorified advertisement, I wasn't kidding. When Ness was included, all of a sudden people wanted to know Ness's story, and Earthbound soon became a cult classic. Ness was my second most played character growing up, and I was interested in Earthbound because of it. Hell, the only reason why Fire Emblem came to the West was because Moth and Roy were included in a melee. I didn't really have too much experience with Nintendo, so I had no idea who any of these people were. I knew all the Pokemon, every Mario character, Kirby, Link, and literally no one else. Who's this Fox, and why does he have such an uncreative name? Who's this robot dude named Samus? I knew that I was seven. Why is there a young Link? Why does this Falco fly? Who's Mr. Game & Watch and why is he flat? Why do they invite Jigglypuff? I didn't know the answers, so I could either buy their games and find out that way, or I could read their trophies. More on that later. This one game made me want to learn more about these characters. It was, in a sense, my gateway drug to my lifelong addiction that is Nintendo. As for the game itself, it's not your average fighting game. Instead of memorizing long combos, you've got A for regular attacks and B for special attacks. Move the analog stick up, down, left, or right, and you get different attacks for each button. Instead of a health bar, you have a percent gauge. The higher the number, the further you'll go when you get hit. When you fall off the stage or go too far off screen, you die in a beautifully satisfying explosion. It sounds simple at first, but when you find out about golden grabs, dodges, aerial attacks, and more advanced mechanics, it becomes a competent fighting game in its own right. Hell, even today, Melee still has an active competitive community, and they pull off some crazy stuff. Seriously, one high up match was won because one player discovered a new mechanic mid-match and used it to his advantage to win. Yep, it's that kind of game. It can be played with up to four players, but I almost always play one-on-one -on -one with no items, which I think is a much better experience. Play the game however you want, though. As long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. If you're that one guy that only plays coin battle, then by all means do it. With one-on-one -on -one no items, the game gets really intense as your percentage gets higher and higher, and in free-for-alls, the game gets really chaotic and fun. A fun party game or a serious competitive fighter. It's all up to how you want to play. 
playable characters, while most being pretty solid, can still be hit or miss. Some characters are pretty terrible, like Pichu. Others, like Moth, Fox, and Jigglypuff, are crafted to a fine tune by Masahiro Sakurai's blood, sweat, tears, and semen. At the end of the day, play as whoever you want, but mainly has a slight balancing issue when it comes to characters. Some characters are just clearly better than others. It's by no means a glaring issue, and you probably won't even care with casual play. It's just a quirk that the game has. There's way more you can do other than boost and dashes, though. Boost up is classic mode. It's your usual fighting game story mode, except there's no story being told here. You just defeat everyone who dares to challenge you. There'll be a few bonus challenges sprinkled in there, too. They're not even hard. They're just there to break up the monotony. Get to the end, you'll fight Master Hand. Get his health down to zero, and you win. On higher difficulties, you'll even run into Crazy Hand, who's like Master Hand, but crazier. Finish classic mode, and you'll get a trophy of the character you won with. Adventure mode is similar to classic mode, but you'll instead be doing challenges based on other games. Like going through this weird Zelda maze, escaping from Brin Store, or running a foot race on an F Zero track while people are racing at breakneck speeds. You know, pretty standard stuff. At the end, you fight Bowser instead of Master Hand, and you get a trophy of the character you won with, but with a different pose. Unlock all 25 characters in your unlock. Oh, in All Star mode, you need to defeat every character in the game except the one you're playing as. You'll get limited healing items, then if you die once, you lose. I actually forgot how hard All Star is on normal. Don't expect a cakewalk unless you're the kind of person that plays on very easy. Win and you'll get a trophy of the character you won with, but with a different, different pose. Wow, they were getting really creative with these rewards. Event matches are essentially mission mode. Earlier events are really easy, and the later events are hold as balls. Like, goddamn, why are these things so hard? Just defeat Dr. Mario and Peach as Luigi? Easy. Challenge accepted. I immediately regret taking this challenge. Jesus, game, could you tone down the AI a bit? I can barely move, let alone actually hit this aggressive AI. I managed to clear most of the events, but even after all these years of getting better at melee, I still haven't been able to beat all 51 events. Next up is... Self-explanatory, really. Each character has their own obstacle course to run through, and you will really get a feel for how each character plays. I forgot how fun this mode is. Mastering each course and trying to get a faster time is surprisingly addicting. Next up... Home Run Contest! Beat the hell out of this poor sandbag and use the conveniently placed home run bat to send that thing flying. I am not good at this mode. Now it's time for... Either defeat 10 of these weird hologram things, or 100 of them. Or we could try to survive for 3 minutes, or 15 minutes. Well, if that's not enough for you, survive an endless onslaught of fighters until you die. And if that's not enough for you, turn up the AI to 99 and fight Cruel Melee, who everyone wants to head served on a silver platter. All these modes are hold, and they'll take you a while to finish them if you're inexperienced. And at the end of the day, if all you want to do is dick around, there's... Training mode. There's a lot of options just to mess around and try whatever weird battle scenarios you can come up with. I've spent more time digging around over here than I can probably count. It's strange how entertaining it is to set an opponent to 999% and just launch him into the air by looking at him funny. If that's still not enough, feel free to try out Special Melee. You can play a lot of fun modes like Samina where you actually have health, and Super Sudden Death where you spawn at 300%. Some suck though, like Invisible Melee, but where everyone is invisible, but the AI still seems to know where you are anyway, and Single Button Melee where you only have your standard attacks and nothing else. All these modes are there for fun though, so have as much fun as you want over here. And finally, there's all these trophies that you can find. They're not only there to look cool, but by reading the descriptions you can read up on Nintendo lore for games you didn't play. You can even use it to discover games you might be interested in. I first thought Pikmin was a Pokemon ripoff based off the name, but then I was actually interested in the game after I found out what they were. And so, my search for Pikmin began, which ended with me never finding a copy. Thank god for the Wii U eShop. It even has some trophies for then unreleased games like the first Animal Crossing. That's pretty bad advertising putting future release for the name. At least put its Japanese name. I probably would have tried playing Animal Crossing as a kid if I had known it existed. There's some stuff from Goldeneye on the N64, but they removed the name due to copyright. If you want more trophies, you can even gamble away all your coins for them. Oh, and there's this glitch where Daisy's trophy has an eye in the back of her head, but unfortunately, I have a new version of the game where this glitch is fixed. Oh well. As fantastic as this game is though, let's be honest, it's not perfect. Mainly how hard it is to unlock every stage and character. Let's just say you're casually playing the game and having fun, but you want the full boosted experience. You look up the requirements and my god, just look at those requirements. Let's say you love Luigi like a son. You need to play as Luigi. Now, which method are you going to discover first? Complete the first stages of adventure mode with the time ending in 2 in the second slot, then defeating Luigi and Peach in less than a minute, then clear the rest of adventure mode who playing 800 goddamn versus matches. 
Let's say you need to play as Mewtwo. You'll have to play a total of 20 hours in Vuzes mode, with 700 Vuzes matches. If you unlock every character through Vuzes matches alone, then that'll take a really long time. Let's just think about how we could do this efficiently. A one stock match would probably take about one minute, meaning that a thousand matches to unlock every character is a thousand minutes. A thousand minutes is roughly 16 and a half hours. Alright, let's be more realistic. If you do three stock matches, which average about two and a half minutes, then it'll take about 41 hours. And we're just talking about characters right now. Let's look at these stage requirements. Can we go back to the character unlocks? Successfully complete target test with every character? Complete 15 minute melee? To unlock Final Destination, the most basic stage you could possibly have, you needed to finish Event 51, which is unlocked after you have finished every other event. Remember how old the events are? Call me a coward or whatever all you want, but just unlocking all these characters and stages shouldn't be this damn hard. I mean, all these whole challenges is fine, but not at the cost of making the important unlockables hard too. There are alternatives to unlocking characters, but I seriously doubt most people would be able to figure out those requirements on their own. Which means most people will just end up playing a ton of Vuzes matches instead. When it comes to stages, you're out of luck since there's only one way to unlock each of those. Unlocking all the characters and stages would be something you should just be able to leisurely do as long as you keep playing the game, not some insanely whole challenge that you have to go out of your way for. If you want to play Smash Melee, go right ahead. I think it holds up really well, all things considered. The only issue is finding it for cheap. Sure, you can go to the fantastical land of eBay and find it cheap, but if you go to an actual retailer, they'll go for about 50 bucks used. Also, keep in mind that if you're playing on an HGTV, you'll probably have a noticeable amount of input lag. This isn't the game's fault, it's just how HGTVs work. Playing on a CLB and it's completely fine. With modern setups, you'll still be able to play it, but it won't be optimal. It's weird, whenever I play any other GameCube game on an HGTV, I don't have any real issues. If you want to play Melee on an HGTV without input lag, you'll have luck at the moment. The only option would be wait for Melee to come to Switch Virtual Console, but god knows when that'll happen. This sounds like a bigger issue than it really is though. True, I'd prefer less input lag, but I still have fun with playing Melee on our modern TV. As much as I love this game, at the end of gathering footage, I really just wanted to go back to playing Smash Wii U. It has been fun to go back to, but Smash Wii U is still the definitive Smash Bros. game in my opinion. Even with those personal tastes, Super Smash Bros. Melee is still fantastic all these years later. It's got some small issues, but other than that, it's still just as fun as I remember. I really can't recommend this game enough. This is a game that got me into my lifelong love to Nintendo, and I really can't thank it enough for that. This has been that Flame Assassin guy. And Super Smash Bros. Melee is my favorite GameCube game. It's even tied to Smash Brawl, and Smash 4 is my second favorite game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next mission. Super Smash Brothers Melee!